So the ovarian cycle is divided into two main phases. So you have the follicular phase and the luteal phase. The follicular phase is the development of our follicle. So our follicle is what nourishes our oocyte. And what I have drawn here on the board, so this here is a primary follicle. This is a secondary follicle. And this here is my mature follicle. Okay, so all of this is going, that's happening here, this is within the follicular phase. From here moving on, this is the luteal phase. Okay, so at this point, when we have our mature follicle, what results is the LH surge. So the LH surge is what activates our metalloprotease enzymes that are going to degrade this mature follicle. So it degrades this mature follicle and ovulation happens. So ovulation happens around day 14. And so what will happen is we'll bring this secondary oocyte here into the fallopian tube. And so once we have this oocyte here in the fallopian tube, the leftover product from here is what's found in these phases. So this here is what's known as the corpus luteum. This is what's known as the corpus albicans, okay? And so what's regulating this process here is our, our negative and positive feedback mechanisms, okay? So in this lecture, we're gonna discuss the specifics of the positive and the negative feedback mechanisms and how we can control this. All right, so like I said, ovarian cycle is divided into the follicular and the luteal phase. So the follicular phase is further divided into the early, the mid, and the late follicular phase. And so um, the next point to explain here before I get into what's going on going from early to mid to late, we need to be reminded that we're trying to get to our dominant follicle because there are going to be other follicles that are um, competing for resources. They're competing for the estrogen. So that way um, it can provide um, the nutrients for our secondary oocyte. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind here. So going from our early to our mid follicular phase, what we're doing is establishing our dominant follicle. And so the follicle that wins, the dominant follicle, is gonna have a high affinity for follicle stimulating hormone. And so it has a high affinity for FSH due to the increasing receptors. It has a lot of receptors for FSH. And so because it has a lot of these FSH receptors, it's gonna have lots and lots of estrogen, okay, compared to the, compared to the um, other follicles. And so the first mechanism that happens is a negative feedback. So the reason a, a negative feedback mechanism happens is to establish this dominant follicle. Because if we have all of these follicles that are competing, the one that is able to survive has a lot of estrogen because what the negative feedback mechanism is, is um, once the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary detect increasing levels of estrogen, it'll inhibit the release of these. It will inhibit the re release of FSH and LH, and then also here too. Okay, because we're trying to establish
our dominant follicle. So this is what's going on from early to the mid phase. All right, so in the late follicular phase, right before, so ovulation is what happens around day 14. And so in order for the LH surge to happen, we need a positive feedback mechanism. And so the dominant follicle is going to um, be secreting increasing levels of estrogen. So if we're, once it detects these increasing levels of estrogen, that's what results in our positive feedback and we get our LH surge. And so what happens with the LH surge, as, I, as we've already said, we activate these metalloproteases and ovulation happens. So positive feedback, estrogen, and then I'll write this here, ovulation happens. Okay, so now that ovulation has happened, we now need to discuss the um, last feedback mechanism. Okay, so we've now completed the follicular phase, so we're moving on to the luteal phase. And once again, this structure here, this is the corpus luteum. So what the corpus luteum secretes, it secretes increasing levels of estrogen, increasing levels of progesterone, and increasing levels of inhibin. So if the corpus luteum is secreting levels of something known as inhibin, what do you think is going to be the effect? The effect is a negative feedback mechanism. So we're going to be inhibiting the release of these, we're going to inhibit the releasing hormone and then which also inhibits the release of these trumpet hormones. And so the reason that we're inhibiting the release of these hormones is because the corpus, first off, the corpus luteum is already providing all of this, um, all of the hormones for the developing, or for this secondary oocyte here. But what it also does is it inhibits the development of any other follicles. Because we already have our mature follicle that underwent um, ovulation and everything, and so um, we're inhibiting the development of any of these other follicles. Okay, and so uh, towards the end of the luteal phase, this corpus luteum is degraded. So this structure here is the corpus albicans. And so this corpus albicans is what's left over after the corpus luteum. And so this corpus albicans, it's not going to be secreting any estrogen, any progesterone. And so this is what's happening at the very end of the luteal phase. And so whenever the levels of estrogen and progesterone, whenever these levels are decreased, this is what's going to stimulate the menstrual cycle. And so this is a good stopping point here, and in the next lecture, we'll discuss the menstrual cycle.